If you have an RV, sooner or later you gotta do it. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you'll definitely live amazing, we think. If you have an RV, you probably know that we're full-time RVers. But even if you're part-time RVers and you just get out on weekends, there is one thing that you need to do. You may put it off, but you you got to do it. you got to do it. Eventually. Yeah. It gets to a point where uh, it, there's no, turn, no getting around it. You've got <laughs> you've to wash your rig. That's right. We're going to explore the options on what you can do to clean your rig. So if you have one and you're part-time and you still have a home, yes, you could probably put it in your driveway. It might be too big of a job. And then some people can't fit their campers in their driveway. Especially now on the West Coast where there's a water shortage. You're only allowed to water your grass twice a week or and you couldn't wash your car in the driveway. The best option, I think, is to go into a truck wash. Is uh, it Blue Beacon? Blue Beacon. And uh, they're all over the country, and you just pull in, and they did the truck and the fifth wheel for $65. And it was a good deal. So if you're going to go to a Blue Beacon, here's some things to think about. If there's not one close to you, you're going to be doing it on a travel day when you're going from point A to point B. Yeah, you're going to pass one. They're along the interstates because the truckers use them. There are over 100 Blue Beacon locations across the United States. They wash RVs, including motorhomes, fifth wheels, and travel trailers. The really cool thing about Blue Beacon is they are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's always people doing the work, not a machine. What you want to do is allow time for it. Now, ours took 20 minutes to wash. I think 20 minutes is Something, about right. About, about 20, yeah. Yeah, but there were two vehicles in front of us. Two trucks and semi-trailers. So there was almost a 40-minute wait before we got in. So just allow for that. We thought they did a great job. Yeah, they did really one of the best washes that we've had on this rig since we got it. We had our bikes covered on a bike rack. There's enough room between the bikes and the back of the rig that they were able to wash the back wall without a problem. And they cleaned the tires and wheels really well. Now, of course, you know, our slides are in. So if you are going to use Blue Beacon, you know that you, when you get to where you're going, you may want to open your slides and just clean that area, which is just a small fraction of, you know, the whole rig. So it's not a big deal. They don't do the roof, and you don't want to wash your roof after you've washed the rigs. If you're going to do a blue beacon, wash your roof before you leave where you're going. Are you saying roof or roof? Roof. Roof. You said roof. I said roof. Roof. <laughs> you say roof, I say roof. Yeah, roof. <laughs> yeah. Wash the roof before you... Roof. Roof. <laughs> before, you, <laughs> before you pull out of your, your spot. You don't go through a blower so that you come out of the wash bay dripping wet. We just drove on and let the wind blow dry it as we were heading down I-90. That's my answer. Just go down the interstate and blow <laughs> yeah, it off. Yeah, so. it worked. Another option is to have somebody come to your campsite, and we've had that happen. So talk about the ins and outs of that. The mobile wash guys will come, and, and some do a really terrific job. Some do just barely okay. Now, both times we've had it done, they've actually brought their water, like spot-free oh, yeah. water. Yeah, they have water on board in tanks, and they don't use a lot of water to do it. I mean, they have foam guns that apply, looks like, snow on your rig, and then they scrub it, and then they rinse it. So it doesn't, I suspect they're not using much more than 10 gallons of water to do a rig our size, 35-foot fifth wheel. We had it done in Yuma, Arizona, and how much was that? The Yuma, they washed both the rig and the truck for 120 I think it was. That was a great deal. It really was. Remember we were in Menifee and we didn't actually hire them, but we had neighbors who hired them and it was like, I think I it was forget. $10 a foot because it was $350. Yeah, it was going to be over 300 bucks to get it done. So definitely get the price. If you're going to get washed in a campground, you want to know that price up front because if you're thinking in your head, oh, it's worth $100 and all of a sudden you're hit with a bill of $350, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So that would be a big surprise. We had it done also in Cottonwood. Do you remember how much we paid there? I think 150 or something like that. I, I can't remember. And that was the one that I said was just okay. He did a really a, a substandard job. And uh, well, so. 
You know, I think a question to ask is, will they wash the roof? Because I'm not sure you always get the roof washed. Well, he did, but, but the cap was left spotted. I mean, he didn't use enough soap on the cap. There were still bug marks all over the cap when it was done. Generally, the first thing you want to do if you want to wash it in your campsite is make sure that that's okay. Most likely it will say it in the rules that if it's not, but you still want to check. And then usually there's a fee. If it's okay, they're not going to just say, well, you can do it. You have to like get a ticket usually and you spend what? I paid 10 bucks in a campground in Billings, Montana the last time I did it in a campground. And there are some things about a fifth wheel that you just don't want to wash yourself. And what's that? The front cap, that's the really the scariest part of washing one. Because ours is is a pretty tall unit. It's 13, four and a half. To get the top of the cap, you really can't do it safely from a ladder. What I do is I wash as far up the cap as I can from the ground. And then I go up on the roof and, and wash the... You kind of lay down. Yeah, I bought a brush that has a soap dispenser in it. And so I could scrub it you know standing up and then and then rinse it and then and actually you should do that first before you do the bottom half some fifth wheels is actually scary to stand on the roof towards the front because there's a downward slope oh it slopes yeah and that's why you can't get it from the ground because it slopes away from you when, when you're standing on the ground and it's 13 feet high do now you're up there you're dealing with water likely to slip that's something i've noticed too if you're stationary for a long time your roof is going to get really dirty particularly if you're if you're in a place like florida which has a lot of moisture you can get like a green algae buildup right oh, yeah. yeah so one thing that uh, you can learn from my mistakes is when I bought uh, the last fifth wheel the 260 RD it was brand new and then I drove 2700 miles across the country to Washington State guess what I did not do before I left I did not wax it. So I had some bugs just embedded in that front cap. No matter what rig you have, when it's brand new. Wax it'll be that cap, especially if you have full body paint. That's important. Even if your rig is used, you want to wax it before you do a long road trip. That'll make the cleaning so much easier. Yeah, it, it does help a lot. I guess we've answered the question on the thing you have to do. You have to do it when you mm. have an RV. We, we answered that. Yeah. Yeah, no matter have. how you do it. So you can do it in a few different ways, right? You can do it in the campsite, you can do it in your driveway, or you can do it on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Paul and I want to thank you so much. If you watched our previous video, we talked about our dog Mango and some of the issues that he's having. So thank you so much for the love and support and the helpful tips. We so appreciate you and the, the A-Team community is just wonderful. Yeah, we've said it before and, and you guys are like family to us. So, so thank you for that. And we look forward to meeting you out here on the road. Our rig is filthy right now. Yeah, I, need, I was going to write something no, on No, don't do that. No? No. I was going to write wash, wash me. No? <laughs> you don't want me to write wash me? It grinds it into oh, the paint. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Oopsie. Oopsie.